The word entrepreneur has become almost synonymous with risk taker. Someone who's willing to take that mighty leap of faith to found their business. Yet, when we culturally define the DNA of an entrepreneur as he was a drinker, a yeller, a man of unstoppable urges and impulses, the embodiment of entrepreneur as risk taker, <laughs> as the New Yorker has here, who exactly are we welcoming into the field? What, what about her? Does she have the risk profile of an entrepreneur? Uh, she's a mom. Uh-oh, we know about that. Um, <laughs> she's never started a business, and she walks into a room and analyzes all the ways that it could kill her. <laughs> that was me the year I founded Build and Imagine. So in the last couple of years, as I've brought in Build and Imagine off the ground, um, I've been able to get it into retail, like Amazon, QVC, and most recently, Barnes & Noble. I've raised over a million in angel funding. A lot of that came from my Haas classmates, so thank you to that. Um, and along the way, I think my classmates have been really enthusiastic about what I'm doing. So some of that probably comes from the fact that I've created a fun toy with an important mission to get girls building. But more than that, I think their excitement is simply because I'm doing it. Because in their mind, I had the courage to take this glorious leap of faith that's required by an entrepreneur. And that alone is admirable. And yet, when I imagine the leap of faith required, this is the image that <laughs> is a little more relatable to me. I have to do what? Not the person soaring with no abandon, but the person thinking if they take just one step forward with not out knowing exactly where they're headed, they're going to fall to their certain death. But what if we were to reframe this startup launch process just a little bit and think of it not as cliff diving or leaping, but as a slow and steady climb up a mountain? Same destination, a little less scary. So I had the opportunity to go to this awesome high school and realize there's a lot of outdoor <laughs> themes going on today. Um, and we had this great outdoor education program. My um, junior year, I was assigned to the most technical trip that year. So it was scaling a 14er, and it was covered in ice and snow, and the final ascent was going to be up an ice wall using crampons and axes. Um, and the reward would be a long glissade down, which is kind of like sledding down a mountain. So it was me and four other senior guys, all really buff, all had a lot of climbing experience. And I distinctly remember the moment when we were packing group gear, and one of the guys pulls out this pair of really shiny red mountaineering boots that he'd worn in on a trip before, and his face was so giddy with anticipation. And I thought, oh my god, I am out of my league. So we, we went over to the base camp. We spent the night. I woke up pounding headache, nausea. I couldn't get that visual of basically sliding down that cliff and sliding all the way down the mountain to my death out of my head. And so the instructor could sense my hesitation, and it was a time to leave. And he said, you're, you're at mile zero. And you're thinking about everything you're going to have to do to get to the top. He said, just think about how to get to that tree line that's up ahead. And so step by step, one foot in front of the other, I started to climb. I made it to the tree line. And I thought, all right, well, now I can see the, the ice cliff up ahead. I might as well go have a closer look. And so I kept going. And by the time I got up, up to that cliff, and I put one foot in and the other foot in, and my legs were trembling, I thought, well, I'm tethered into this rope now. If I gave up, it'd be really inconvenient to my climbing partners. <laughs> so I better, I better just keep going, and so on and so forth, until I reach the summit. And that glissade down was epic. <laughs> so imagine that as your entrepreneurial journey. I didn't start day one with a super robust business plan ready to be defended. I started with one afternoon in the Haas Library pulling $10,000 worth of free reports to determine if there was a business opportunity. Hey, that looks good. Then I did laser cutter, found illustrations, hobbled together a prototype, spent another day at the Children's Museum, had some nice faces here. I made my goals really attainable, and I just took action. Each step along the way, asking myself, what's the next thing I need to do to try to prove that Build and Imagine is going to be a viable business? And even taking it step by step, oh my god, it's so overwhelming at times. <laughs> um, and there's been at least three times when I thought we had a problem so big that we were sure to fail. And that fear that I felt was so strong, I thought the fear meant that failure was coming. I thought the fear meant something. 
But it turns out fear is not a very accurate predictor of negative outcome. Fear is actually a really normal, healthy, natural, useful response that's going to prepare you for what's to come. In the case of me as an entrepreneur, fear gives me a jolt of productivity that I think actually improves my chance of outcome being positive. And so um, I want to leave you with the words of actually my behavioral therapist. Um, <laughs> from the first time I ever saw a behavioral therapist was the year I founded Build and Imagine. She was treating me for um, claustrophobia-induced panic attacks, which again started the year I founded Build and Imagine. Maybe just <laughs> no coincidence there. Um, so she said to me, you're afraid? So what? Be afraid and do it anyways. So thank you. Thank you.